All right. In this video, we show that the arithmetic mean of n numbers, that is a1 plus a2 plus and so on plus a n divided by n. So this a1 to a n are non-negative numbers. This is called arithmetic mean. And this is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, that is the nth root of the product of these numbers. So this is called geometric mean. So we are going to prove this. Maybe you have seen a simpler uh, uh, version of this one, that is a plus b divided by 2 is greater than or equal to square root of a times b. So this is just an arithmetic mean of two numbers, and this is geometric mean of two numbers, of the same two numbers. And showing this was easy, but uh, uh, showing the general version like this requires a bit more uh, tricks. So let's start. Well, before that, just in case you never seen uh, the proof of this version, uh, let's just do that. Uh, as an exercise. So what we need to show is a plus b minus 2 times square root of ab is greater than or equal to 0. So if we can show that, we are done, right? So since we are assuming that a and b are non-negative, this we can write this as square root of a squared. So, so a is equal to this and b is equal to square root of b squared, right? and square root of a times b is square root of a times square root of b. So factorizing this, we have this. So since this is a real number, this is a real number, and real number minus real number squared is always non-negative. So this is always greater than or equal to 0, and we are done. Now, let's move on to the general version. Uh, for proving this one, uh, we can't use the same trick as this one. Uh, in fact, what we do here is to first prove uh, the so-called Jensen's inequality. Inequality. That is, if a function f is convex, suppose we have a convex function, then wh wh what this means here is the square, uh, the second derivative of this is always positive, okay? So if this is the case, then we have the following. So uh, we're assuming that this function is defined on some interval, okay? Convex on some interval, let's say i. So suppose we have x1, x2, and so on, up to xn in the same interval, and then we have uh, the sum of uh, the average, the mean of uh, the functional value here is greater than or equal to the, the value of the function at the mean of these x's, okay? So that is one over n sum of xi's. Okay, so if we expand this, this is like this. f of x1, f of x2, and so on, and f of xn. So that's the left-hand side. And this is greater than or equal to f of 1 over n, x1, x2, and so on, xn. Okay. So first we show this Jensen's inequality, or maybe we should call it Jensen's inequality since uh, Jensen was a Danish uh, mathematician. And then using this and applying f of x equal to uh, exponential of x, since this function has uh, always, uh, the second derivative of this function is always positive, then we can apply Jensen's inequality and then we are almost done. Okay, so let's first prove Jensen's inequality. That is, for all... So we have a function defined on some interval, such that for all x in that interval, 
the second derivative is always positive. Okay, so this is given condition. And given that, uh, we want to prove that the arithmetic mean of the functional values at each of these points, uh, so x1, x2, xn are in the interval. So this mean is greater than or equal to the functional value of uh, at the mean of these x's. Okay, so to do that, uh, you know, since we are given this condition and by Taylor's theorem, uh, theorem, we have the following. Okay, and for each of these x, uh, let's use j uh, here for x j can be expanded around some x bar. So we expand up to the uh, second derivatives. Okay, derivative. Uh, so f of x1, f prime of x bar times xj minus x bar plus uh, f double prime. Uh, some uh, constant cj over 2 x j minus x bar squared for some cj in the interval. So this cj is a constant somewhere between x j and x bar. Here we use x bar so this can be any any number in the interval, but uh, here it's convenient if we set x bar as the average of x's. So from 1 to n, x, j. Okay, so we use x bar as this. Now, since this condition is given, this is positive. And this is, of course, positive because it's a square of a real number. So this whole term is positive, right? So if we drop this term from this expression, we have, so f of xj is greater than or equal to f of x bar plus f, so this term, f prime of x bar xj minus x bar. Okay, so we have this. Now, this holds for all xj's. So, so xj can be any of x1, x2, and so on, up to xn. So, so we have this for all of these, right? So adding this, both sides, from j equal to 1 to n, we have sum of j from 1 to n, f of xj is greater than or equal to sum of j to n. So f of x bar, f prime of x bar, xj minus x bar. Okay. But this one is a constant, so we can just take it out. And so the right hand side is equal to this times n, n times f of x bar. And this one, it doesn't contain the index j, so we can take it out. So f prime of x bar and sum of j from 1 to n xj minus x bar. Okay. Oops. Now, so let's leave this as it is. And let's expand this one. So sip, split this summation into two uh, terms. So the first one is this. Uh, sum of j equal to 1 to n x j and minus uh, sum of, so this is just x bar without any index. So this is just uh, n times x bar because there are n terms in the summation. Okay, now, so this part, you know, remember how we define x bar? So this is sum of xj's divided by n. 
So this thing here is uh, n times x bar. And this is uh, n times x bar. So this cancels this. So this is 0. So this term is all gone. So this is equal to n times x, f of x bar. So if we summarize, we have this thing is greater than or equal to this thing. So that is sum of j from 1 to n of f of x j is greater than or equal to n times f of x bar. So if we divide both sides by n and restore the, 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 the definition of this x bar, we have the desired inequality. So this is the, the arithmetic mean of these functional values that is greater than or equal to f of the average, the mean of the values of x, j's. And we are done. So this is, the, uh, this is Jensen's inequality. OK, now suppose f of x is exponential of x. And uh, we know that its deriv derivative doesn't change. So second derivative is also exponential of x, which is always positive, right? So therefore, we can apply uh, Jensen's inequality to this function. So for each xj, we define yj as exponential of xj. So let this, okay? Then apply Jensen's inequality inequality. Uh, we have on the left hand side, this is 1 over n. So, so f of xj means yj, right? So that is sum of y's. So which is greater than or equal to, so f is exponential here. Uh, just write uh, e. So e to the power of uh, 1 over n and uh, sum of xj's. Okay. But uh, by the property of exponential function, this is, uh, so we can split this. Uh, first, let's move this one. So this is equal to e to the power of sum of these everything to the power of 1 over n. So this is nth root of this quantity. But uh, exponential over sum is product of exponentials. So that is this inside here is equal to exponential of x1 times exponential of x2 times and so on, exponential of n, everything to the power of 1 over n. Okay. Now, each of these is just y1, y2, y n. So this is equal to y1 times y2 times y n. And this one to the power of uh, 1 over n is the nth root. Okay, So this arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to the geometric mean. So this holds, since we are using this function, this is strictly positive. Okay, there is no zero here. As long as xj is a real number, this is, yj is strictly positive. What if one of yj's is exactly equal to zero? Then in that case, the right-hand side becomes zero, exactly zero. But the left-hand side may be zero, but may not be zero. In that case, uh, it's positive. So even if one of uh, these yj's is zero, uh, this inequality still holds. So for any yj's greater than or equal to zero, we have uh, this uh, inequality. So the arithmetic mean 
is greater than or equal to the geometric mean. Okay, and we are done.